Well, <clears throat> hello Nick. Hi Andrew, uh, how are you doing? Fine, thanks. I'm happy you accepted uh, my invitation to talk about yeah. uh, this subject which is, uh, I think, in everybody's mind. Mm -hmm. Happiness. What is happiness for you? How do you feel it? And uh, make it, make, t tell us a bit about uh, yeah. happiness. Um, yeah, I mean, happiness for me is not so much connected with how things are going in my life externally, you know, or how much money I'm making. It seems to be about self-acceptance. How much can I, how much can I love myself? All the parts of me just need to be befriended. And actually the critical voice um, mm -hmm. is there because on some level it's trying to protect me from something. And what I discovered once, um, I went to see a life coach and I was telling her about uh, the inner critic. And she said, uh, have you tried thanking the critic? Um, and I said, no, I, no he's, he's, he ruins my life. Why would I thank him? She said, well, just try it. Just try saying thank you for what, whatever you're trying to do. And uh, and I tried it, and uh, it, it quietened a little bit. And since then, I've discovered that it's not about beating the critic or anything else in my life. It's about befriending um, everything. So I have to say welcome, whatever the circumstances are. And there's a miracle that happens then. Um, on a good day, when I can do that, I just find peace. Um, so happiness is peace, really, for me, and uh, a state of peace like the opposite of war, which goes on a lot inside. Um, do you remember a moment when you change your uh, state from uh, maybe a low energy state or some, someone when you had a lot of voices in your head yeah, telling you yeah. something bad and, and uh, going fast or just changing this mode into a, a positive one? Mm. Can you remember something and uh, if you do, um, tell us a bit, tell me a bit. Yeah, yeah I can remember a very ordinary situation. Um, probably about a year ago now, <clears throat> um, and it was a, a situation I'm sure lots of parents face when they're frustrated, their children won't do what they ask. Um, I'd been trying to get my son to do something, I can't remember what it was now, but I was so cross, and um, I needed to get some space, so I, I uh, you know, he, he stayed with uh, my wife, and I, I just went for a walk, and I was furious, I went, I walked along near the sea, near, near where I live, um, and mostly I was thinking, you know, you're a failure as a dad, you can't even you can't even keep your temper with your son. You, you know, sort it out, you idiot. You know, real kind of strong stuff. And then I remembered that I'd, I'd read, you know, let's try accepting rather than fighting. <clears throat> and uh, as I was walking along by the sea, I just reached this state of um, tiredness. I was so tired of this war with myself. I was so tired of battering myself and tamed. And it's so familiar to me. And um, I made a pledge to myself at that moment, and um, I said, um, okay, I am, I am, from now on, I'm, I am going to be my own best friend. I'm not going to stab myself in the back the whole time. I'm not going to do it. Um, and it felt very significant. I felt like a, a tangible change in energy. I was, looking, I was out in the sea, I sort of breathed it in. And it was such a relief. I, uh, the person who came back felt like a different little person almost, because suddenly, instead of feeling I was in a state of war, and at any moment I could be knifing myself in the ribs. I was like a united front where I could trust myself, all the different parts of me, and we were working together, we were friends. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, as long as I know that I, 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 I like myself, I can face most things in life. And suddenly I find I, I like other people as well. It's almost like I mirror outwards to the world whatever I'm doing to myself. Um, and that felt like a very, you know, a s trivial situation maybe, mm -hmm. but a change in thinking which um, taught me it's all about acceptance, self-acceptance. Mm -hmm. and, and that paradoxically is a change. I mean, I can't change myself until I accept myself as I am. Yeah. I deeply b believe uh, this, what you, what you just yeah. said, that yeah. you cannot change yourself without uh, accepting the, exactly the way you are right now. Yeah. Right now. So yeah. like for me, I, I put it in this way, the secret to change is first to accept the way you are right now, yes. and then you can start changing. Absolutely. With, yeah. When you try to change the way you are, starting from uh, um, a non-acceptance of the mm. present, because I want to change because I hate doing this, or I hate uh, being yeah. like this, you will not going to make Well, and also we know this from uh, our outward relationship. So anybody who gets married <coughs> hoping to change their spouse, <laughs> forget it, it's not going to happen. You, know, you, don't, you don't marry somebody in order to change them to something else. Yes. You marry them, and then you say, do you know what? I love you absolutely as you are. 
and suddenly they change. Exactly. Yeah. The secret to change is to accept the person exactly yeah. as he is. Which is what we all need, unconditional acceptance, you know, yeah. from ourselves and from others, but mostly from ourselves. Yeah. Okay, I, uh, I now will challenge you to go back now in time <coughs> and uh, try to see yourself a few years ago, maybe 10, 20 years ago, yeah. when you were also searching, searching happiness. I mean, I think most of the people do this in mm. different yeah, ways. Yeah, I can remember one much earlier than that, actually. Um, when I was a kid, uh, I, I desperately wanted, it was a toy, it was a toy, it was a van, a little van, battery powered van, which would, if you drew a line, it would yeah. follow the line. Wow. And I thought, oh, I, I want one of these, I just <laughs> need one of these. And I, I nagged and I nagged, I can't remember how old I was, maybe only 10 or something, you know. Mm -hmm. I nagged my mother and said, oh, 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 please, look, it's in the Argos cattle, it's in the, uh, look, oh, I, I must have this. And uh, I could see her getting worn down and down and down. And, um, and then one day, uh, after I'd been nagging for ages, she bought me this thing, brought it home. And I opened it up and I drew the line and I watched the thing follow the line. And I drew another line and I watched it follow the line. And I kind of thought, huh, uh, so it follows a line. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and I was, I was bit after about 10 minutes, I felt this deep sense of disappointment and, and shame that I, uh, this thing that I wanted so much, I now knew I was bored of it and I didn't want it after all. I thought, I, thought it was what I wanted, but it wasn't actually. And what I, what really helps me there is there's um, uh, Eckhart Tolle, I think you know, um, mm -hmm. says in one of his books that I like, particularly Stillness Speaks, um, is his book, it's um, you, can, you can accept yourself, the situation, and uh, what if you don't accept it? Well then you can accept the fact that you don't accept it, and then you can keep accepting the fact that you can't accept the fact that you don't accept it. You just keep peeling it back like an onion and say, okay, okay that's fine, I don't accept it, you know. And um, I think that's the work of, of acceptance, is mm -hmm. finding as many layers back as you can go. Yeah. How, uh, how are people in your country, I mean, all the people around you think like you, or uh, how do you relate to the other people and also how are they related to happiness from your point of view? Well I think we're all, everybody's looking for happiness. I suppose the more I accept myself, the more I feel engaged with people and the more I, f the more I don't accept myself, the more I feel we're all failures, we're not doing what we should be doing. Um, I don't think, I, I don't feel, I don't feel massively more enlightened than anybody else in yeah. life. I think we're all just groping for answers. and. Uh, I get so much help from other people, really, um, and I know that I'm a. I, um, for example, I need my own space. I've I've learnt to accept that I'm sort of on slightly on the introvert side of the mm -hmm. spectrum, and and that sometimes I need to pull back from other people, and that that's okay as well. For example, you are uh, in traffic, yes, mm -hmm. and uh, happens that you're right. It's your right to go straight, and then yeah, a car yeah. blocks you, and something happens. Yeah. What would you tell to that person? Yeah, I do that all the time. Well, not all the time, but I have bad days when <laughs> I, uh, I'm not, I'm not living in a very conscious manner. Uh, I explode in a situation. I, I don't behave well, um, and I feel shame comes over me, um, and I have to, I have to accept that that is what I'm feeling and mm -hmm. name it and say, okay, it's all welcome. Um, Maybe a few hours later, you know. <laughs> you know, sometimes if I think I've I've had it quite easy in my life, I find it inspiring to go to people who definitely haven't. Um, and one of those people who really inspires me is a, a man called Viktor Frankl, who was a psychotherapist, and he wrote a book called *Man's Search for Meaning*. And uh, he was uh, in the death camps, um, in the Nazi death camps during the war, and he lost his whole family pretty much to Auschwitz. And uh, he, I mean, his. I, th I think the quote that really hits me full on is, um, "You can take everything away from a man, except this one final freedom, which is to choose your attitude to the circumstances of your life." So I'm paraphrasing, but um, and I find that very moving because, who, you know, what worse situation could we ever be in than, in, than facing extermination and people treating you as vermin? You know. Um, and yet this man managed to find self-acceptance on some level acceptance in that, in that situation and that proves to me that it is possible even though I haven't had to face those kind of mm -hmm. things. Other people do and that, those are the people I find most inspiring. Um, and really what we need is meaning in life mm -hmm. rather than anything else. That's his 
thesis is that what we need to be happy is, is meaning, a sense of why, why, of meaning. That have, and, and also, I think quite importantly as well, that um, especially if you're feeling powerless or there's nothing you can do, is this uh, what he called a kind of surrender to, uh, to somebody other than yourself. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't think he meant surrender to the Nazis particularly, although I guess he had to do that because he <laughs> yeah. was in no position to do otherwise. He, mean, he means um, almost surrender to something bigger, you know, uh, whether you call that God traditionally or just the universe or um, the circle of life. And I find when I'm at, my, at the end of my rope, you know, um, and I can't do it on my own, actually kneeling and opening up and saying I need, some, I, I, I need help um, is the thing that can shift the energy as well, and that can be. And he says you, it's difficult. He uses happiness, the word happiness. To find happiness, you have to open up. You have to um, find it through somebody other than yourself. Actually, which is yeah. a paradox because you know self-acceptance, but also reaching out to other people. Stop a second, because I know I'm pushed by my thoughts. Did I really push the record? Because I know I pushed the record.